Welcome to today's presentation on antenna tuners, an important but sometimes overlooked part of the ham shack. Whether you're a seasoned operator or just getting your feet wet in HF, understanding how tuners work and what options you have is fundamental. While some antennas are perfectly resonant and do not need additional help, many setups benefit enormously from a tuner, especially if you want to operate across multiple bands or make the most of limited antenna real estate. The tuner acts as a bridge, ensuring your transmitter sees a suitable load. In this presentation, we'll compare manual and automatic antenna tuners. We'll dig into their differences in operation capabilities and real-world pros and cons. By the end, you'll have a clearer idea of which type or combination best fits your operating style and station goals. An antenna tuner, despite its name, doesn't actually tune the antenna. Instead, it adjusts the impedance match between your transmitter and the antenna system to ensure efficient power transfer. This matching process is essential because modern transmitters are designed to work with a 50 ohm load. If the impedance is off, the transmitter may reduce power or shut down to protect itself from damage caused by reflected power. By improving the match, the tuner reduces SWR and allows more of your signal to reach the antenna maximizing your station's effectiveness without physically altering the antenna itself. Manual antenna tuners are favored by operators who prefer direct control. These devices use rotary knobs to adjust inductors and capacitors while monitoring SWR on a built-in or external meter. It's a hands-on process that gives the operator precise control over the matching. Because they require no external power, manual tuners are exceptionally reliable, even in off-grid scenarios. They're especially useful for emergency preparedness or portable operation. Another benefit is their ability to handle a wider range of mismatches, especially with unconventional or long wire antennas. Their robust components make them suitable for high power operation and long service life. Manual tuners shine in versatility and reliability. Their ability to match a wide range of impedances makes them invaluable for experimental setups, such as random wires or non-resonant antennas. Because they operate without electricity, they're excellent for emergency communications or off-grid operations. Their simplicity also translates to longevity. With proper care, they can function flawlessly for decades. Another major plus is cost. For high power use, manual tuners deliver excellent performance at a fraction of the cost of high wattage auto tuners, which require more complex electronics. Despite their strengths, manual tuners are not without drawbacks. The most obvious is speed. Each frequency change typically requires manual readjustment. For casual operators, this may not be a problem, but it's inefficient for contesting. They also demand a bit of a learning curve. New operators may struggle to adjust the tuner quickly and accurately, and even experienced hams can find tuning tedious in fast-paced environments. Finally, high-power manual tuners are bulky. The components required to handle 1500 watts are physically large and add weight to your shack, not ideal for portable operations. Automatic tuners bring a whole new level of convenience to ham radio. These devices use internal relays to switch combinations of capacitors and inductors automatically, adjusting for the lowest possible SWR. They're remarkably fast, usually finding a match in under two seconds. Some models integrate with your rig and start tuning as soon as you transmit, requiring no manual intervention. Power is a key requirement, typically from a 12 volt DC source. Automatic tuners can also be placed at the antenna feed point, minimizing coax losses from high SWR and boosting system efficiency. Automatic tuners are designed for speed and ease of use. Whether you're chasing DX, working a contacts, or running digital modes like FT8, they offer near instant tuning that keeps you in action. One of the standout features is a memory recall. Once a match is found for a frequency, it can be recalled instantly without retuning. This significantly boosts efficiency during rapid frequency changes. Their ability to be mounted directly at the antenna feed point offers another technical edge. Matching the impedance before the SWR coax eliminates much of the loss that would otherwise incur from high SWR on the feed line, especially on higher bands. Despite their advantages, automatic antenna tuners come with some important limitations. They rely on external power, which means they're not ideal for power sensitive field or emergency deployments unless you plan accordingly. Their compact designs, especially in portable or internal models, often result in a reduced ability to match very high or very low impedances. This can be a deal breaker for operators using non-resonant or random wire antennas. Another concern is longevity. 
With electronics inside, these tuners are more vulnerable to failures caused by environmental factors like moisture or by RF and electrical surges. Finally, they tend to be more expensive, especially for higher power versions. Where you place your antenna tuner can significantly affect your station's performance. Keeping the tuner in the shack is convenient, especially for manual units, but it also means any impedance mismatch exists along the entire coax run, leading to loss, especially on higher bands. Placing the tuner at the antenna feed point solves this issue by matching it at the source. The coax carries a low SWR signal back to the shack, minimizing transmission loss. However, feed point tuners, especially automatic ones, require extra consideration. They need to be weatherproof, and they need to be powered through a bias T over coax or a dedicated power line. The setup provides the best efficiency, but adds complexity. Operator needs and styles heavily influence the choice between manual and automatic tuners. Manual tuners are attracted to those working within a budget or operating in power-constrained environments. Their mechanical nature and wide matching range makes them reliable tools for off-grid or emergency use. On the other hand, automatic tuners are a must-have for operators engaged in fast-paced frequency agile modes like FT8 or contesting. Their ability to recall settings and integrate directly with the rig makes for seamless operation. Many hams find it beneficial to own both, a robust manual tuner in the shack and a compact automatic tuner for portable or field deployments. This approach ensures flexibility, efficiency, and reliability, regardless of where and how you're operating. In conclusion, there is no one-size-fits-all answer when choosing between manual and automatic antenna tuners. Each comes with its unique advantages and compromises. Manual tuners are durable, flexible, and cost-effective, ideal for budget setups. Automatic tuners shine when speed, integration, and convenience are priorities, especially in fast-paced operating environments. Many experienced hands opt for a hybrid approach, using both tuner types depending upon the situation. Ultimately, your tuner should support how and where you operate, ensuring you spend less time tuning and more time on the air. And with that, I'm going to say thanks for watching, everyone. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.